Hello friends, neighbors, John your Whiskey Neighbor here. Welcome down to the Whiskey Nook. We've started a new year together and uh, not looking for anything fancy after all the holidays. So I thought maybe next few reviews would probably be of some simple malts or whiskeys that you know I've had on my shelf and are still worth sharing and talking about with you. So to start, I'm going to look at Monkey Shoulder. Uh, if I look at other YouTube channels, I think just about everyone I've ever seen has reviewed this. So it's probably about time I give my thoughts. So when we come back, you know, we'll take a look at this Speyside Blended Malt from William Grant & Sons. This will be my thoughts on Monkey Shoulder. Three, four. Thanks for staying with me. Uh, as I was trying to say in the opener, I'd like to go through uh, some nice whiskey that I have on the shelf to share some thoughts. A uh, good thing to do in January, I think, is never stretch the, the budget. I looked at last year, and last year I specifically shot budget whiskey, and I don't. that's not really my intent here. I'm just, uh, you know, we'll be shooting what I have open, uh, what comes to me. Uh, I think that's a decent thing to do in January. So uh, this is Monkey Shoulder, and as I said, you know, really worldwide popular blended malt. You know, it's a blended malt, which means there's only malted barley in here. It's not like a blended scotch, uh, which also has grain whiskey. So there's only barley. Uh, as I understand it, it comes from, you know, the three main distilleries uh, that they own in Dufton in Speyside. And so that would be Glenfiddich, um, Belvini, and uh, Caninvi. You know, I don't think I've ever had specifically anything from Caninvi. Uh, obviously, Ben Fittick uh, had my fair share of that, and Belvini. I appreciate Belvini. Uh, probably my favorite of their entrance line would be the 14-year Caribbean cask, which is a bit odd since I tend not to like rum cask. But I digress. So, you know, uh, just some things. If, if you're new to Scotch or you haven't seen a review of Monkey Shoulder, yeah, blended malt. So it's definitely a Scotch, all from Scotland, all malt. Um, released at 43%. No other language on here, so I think we have to assume it's colored and filtered. Um, and uh, some other things, the idea, like the monkey shoulder, it says right on the bottle, you know, it used to be an injury when they used to have to hand turn the malt floorings, right, to, to keep it from clumping, to keep it evenly uh, um, uh, malting and opening up those sugars, they had to hand turn them and it, apparently it led to an injury um, that was referred to as monkey shoulder, it would drop down, it would be, you know, obviously a really hard thing and thankfully uh, the industry doesn't um, have work practices that would cause that kind of injury, even though there are some people that do uh, hand floor turnings, I think they've changed the way they do it. Anyways, that's the reference to monkey shoulder, to the malt floorings, the turnings that the people had to do uh, by hand, which led to an injury. Some other things on here, uh, you know, it says batch 27, and uh, I remember the first time I saw that, I was like, oh, they release it in batches. I guess every bottle of Monkey Shoulder says batch 27 on it. Uh, in reference to the first time they put it together, it was uh, a combination of 27 um, different casks that went into the vatting and then was bottled. I think the reason why I haven't, I know I got to get at the, at the whiskey, the reason why I haven't reviewed it earlier is in my market, it's significantly more expensive than than almost every twelve year old. I mean, every large twelve year old uh, Scotch. Like it's 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 twenty bucks more than Glenfiddich, Glenlivet, um, you know, all the all the big brand uh, twelve year olds. And so it was never a value whiskey in my market. Lately, it's dropped a bit in price, uh, so that's good. But let's get at the Scotch. Is it worth trying? Is it worth having? If you have a space side, if you don't have monkey shoulder, why don't you give a pour? We'll see what kind of notes we share. This nose has a fair amount of high fruit. Cut apple, pear, but, but a, a sour sweet to it, so a little more lemon. Oh, I think I get a fair amount of uh, barley sugar up front on it too. So. For me, the nose, what stands out is its high sweet, high fruit nature. Um, very orchard fruit, very more, more sweet pear, um, little green apple, some lemon. Hmm. Actually, it's a nice nose. Let's see how it tastes. Slantia. Mm. 
palette's fairly clean. Um, again, I get a little, uh, you know, the, the fruit sweet. Here now it tastes like a light toffee or honey. And then it goes into kind of a graham cracker, a little bit of crust. There's some definite, now I'm playing in the early finish. Uh, already there's a little bit of oaking that comes through, I would say in the early finish, uh, a bit drying. Um, so it dries the palate. Better try another little sip. Uh, not straying far from that first sip. You know, it's got um, some nice fruit sweetness. Um, that now that it's the second sip, what came at the end actually is in the palate. There is some oaking here for me. It's not overly oaked or heavy, but but I can get some 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 drying, some some yeah. It's not tannic. It's not bitter. I'm trying to describe the oak. It's just uh, just a little bit like drying dry oak. Uh, finish is pretty clean, um, and, and then clean and then not much. So I would say, um, the nose is possibly the best part. The palette is nice and light and I think would be enjoyable if you like space side scotch. And the finish is probably its weak spot. It, it, I like drawing finishes, but it doesn't leave me with really amazing lingering taste. Thankfully, no, no real bitter astringency, but the finish is probably uh, its weakest point. So, you know, how to rate this thing? Um, I I like it. And if it is the kind of affordable scotch that I hear everybody commenting on on everyone's channel, like if it's a value scotch in your neighborhood, I would get it. It is light and flavorful and good on its own and probably would bring nice uh, kind of a juice note to cocktails. It's funny, last night I, I poured a little bit uh, and, and my son happened to be here and he Gave it a nose. He said, oh, you're drinking some apple juice. Like it really has quite an expressive fruit nose. And I like it. It, it. it doesn't wow me in any one particular direction, but it's a solid three and a half, three and three quarter, like which is a really good mark for, uh, for its value. Now in my market, as I said, it actually is more expensive than it should be. So it's not really a go-to for me. Well, I wanted to compare it to some Glenfiddich. That would be such a natural comparison. But sadly, my larder is dry from many bottles. So the only um, unblended, unadulterated 12-year-old scotch that I have on the shelf is this rather humble, uh, humble, humble Anok uh, 12. Also a space side. Now it's only 40% instead of 43, but likely chill filtered, likely colored, also all barley. So I thought, you know, that's pretty, pretty common. Uh, again, in, in my area, I can get it for less than I pay for Monkey Shoulder. But let's see, uh, just in a bit of a comparison. <sighs> Much lighter nose, a uh, little floral, um, honey. And this, uh, this has a little more souring lemon in it right now in this comparison. Much gentler. This, uh, the nose, very gentle, very relaxing. I'm really not getting much past just a wisp of fruit and, uh, and some light honey. Let's see what the palate tells us. Sacha. Very gentle actually plays in my mouth is somehow even at 40 percent coating shares a little bit of that barley sugar that i talked about there's a little gentle spicing note though that comes through here a little very light cinnamons interesting that i wasn't getting in the monkey shoulder Much stronger fruit on the nose. Palette is brighter fruit. Almost a cherry now in its fruit nature. Really, that's not its core fruit. I'm just saying that it's got that expressive fruit. And then drops off in the finish. I did not expect the Anok.
Very interesting comparison. Oh, I love doing that live in front of you guys. Um, totally unexpected. Uh, where I was in the nose, I expected. I thought, okay, yeah, this 40, 43, this is just going to be all gentle. And, and, and it started that way and was that way. But there is a little bit of spicing in here um, that does come across in the palate and stays in the finish. Almost not peppery, but just enough perk. And I'm not getting the spice on the monkey shoulder. In this sitting, I would find the fruit of this, like this is, you know, laughing, enjoyable party scotch. But if I was just sitting back and trying to sip through, I might even prefer the Enoch. Incredibly similar. I think I probably pegged this at three and a half. And I, I gave this up to three and three quarters. So I guess I'm giving this a better star value. And probably has a broader, broader appeal. But I can't ignore, I like a little spice and this thing has it. Now, some people might take that as kind of a burning and perhaps that what it, it is. And so that would put you off because I can feel it in my mouth. Didn't get it here. Hard to know what to recommend to you guys. But uh, that was kind of a fun little uh, scotch tasting. Thanks. Thanks for joining me down here. And, uh, and I hope we can have a great year together. Hope you guys are all well. Take care.